Oh, hi, Joy Dib. Good morning. I make videos because I just find it easier than writing and thinking and writing and thinking and writing. I just speak. Um, let me see. I have sort of a, a logical structure of of understanding I typically use in which I break down topics into three, sort of a universal jig, if you will. Um, sexuality um, has three basic areas um, that you can talk of, that one can speak of. Um, our psychological aspect, which in sexuality and regular uh, human sexuality is not the strongest part, but it does, it is part of it, um, and it has to do with the so sorts of things that you, that most reward you sexually, as um, the influence of the world, your parents, and uh, your siblings when you were a child, but like I said, it plays a lesser part, it really, um, as far as regular human or quote unquote heterosexual sexuality psychology is malleable it can it's not too so strong of an aspect and then you have biological or chemical and then you have sociological and cultural these two aspects in human regular heterosexual quote unquote sexuality are stronger biological or chemical are the forces uh, that you can pretty much deduce on your own, that are, are all about stimulating pleasure and um, arousal, satisfaction, um, and um, that third, that part of, of sexuality has very little, I mean, there's, there's a biological um, reactions that have to do with the genders, female or fem or male, obviously. But as far as the engagement, the social aspect, uh, the social activity of, of, of having sex, sexuality, it sees very little uh, distinction. The uh, mechanisms of arousal and, and pleasure uh, can be stimulated by, by any gender. And so there's very little distinction in that, in, in, as far as male and female. And the other third, sociological and cultural, basically, it's like governs the, 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 our ideas and how we throw ourselves into sexuality as we're growing up, given what we were educated to believe, you know, what is okay, what is permissible. And then that, of course, uh, presents a a doorway to things that we are compelled or curious about and then we may be uh, easily um, easily uh, exploring, e will explore with ease or easily prone to exploration because of our culture allowing things to be uh, unorthodox or maybe we have a real hard time uh, trying things differently uh, because our whole society, our whole culture frowns or sees or, or only understands sexuality a certain way. And so these three areas also govern um, homosexuality. Or, or, or it can be sort of broken down into these three areas. Uh, by the way, I just realized um, psycholo psycho psychologically, um, there is a little bit perhaps more than I never realized before uh, that you can deduce plays into sexuality and maybe has to do with how we regard the person we had sex with after the sexual encounter. Like if we're dismissive and and have a hard time um, bonding emotionally or, or, or we're really comfortable and, and easily can fall in love or become friends with that person, that, that comes from psychology. So maybe it's not as, as little as I was saying before, but in any case, when it comes to homosexuality, it plays um, a much, much stronger part. Uh, and I don't want to get into the nurturing uh, discourse of how homosexuality develops, but just to answer your question, 
Um, the psychological part in, in homosexuality plays part because it has to do with with how we developed as children relating to male and female. And so for whatever lacks or influences, um, fears, complexes, traumas, or, or uh, um, uh, how do you say this, things that lacked, things that we didn't get in our self development in our confidence as in the case of males uh, typically you see that guys that continue to seek the love of of men or call uh, quote unquote uh, pursue homosexuality usually maybe didn't have so many uh, group bondings with other males when they were growing up and there wasn't really a sort of respectful uh, dominant and dominant admiration of love with the father dominant admiration of love you know the sort of paternal love that is relaxed but at the same time the the son really respects and admires and and and, and uh, uh, doesn't put down the father doesn't feel alienated or excluded from the father's realm um, or life but actually to like uh, when you're a child, it's more like you're useful or you're you're an extension. You 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 please your dad, right? To, uh, and then that kind of starts leveling off as you grow up, and you start seeing them more as a peer, more as a peer as you get older, and and then finally there there's a part where you we pass and they were a peer, but we didn't really see it that way until all of a sudden they're like a child to us. We have to take care of them. Well, that whole um, Thing is beautiful but anyways I'm, I'm changing the subject um, and so what happens is that uh, the psych the biological the chemical part that is is actually the the most constant force if if well cultural and psycho uh, cultural social can be very determining as far as your first initial ideas of trying something or how you feel about how you have sex and how you express it socially and and what it means culturally and so forth the biology and the chemical third of it is kind of blind it just has to go forward it has to make that baby and so it sees very little distinction so much as as far as the role playing um there are parts that are believed, but they're very theorized. They're not necessarily chemical, biological mechanisms where the softness of a woman stimulates you perhaps more than the roughness of a male. But, you know, in people that pursue homosexuality, it's the other way around. Uh, so is there any fixed chemistry or biology there? Not really. Um, but there are fixed chemical, you know, for example, stroking, and, and caressing and that immediately you know, or touching you there, right? Um, it doesn't matter who does it. <laughs> a guy will get aroused if some if anything touches <laughs> touches us there, right? And uh, so what happens when you're talking about homosexuality, the proportions of those thirds are different. Even though homosexuality is imagine it like a circle within a larger circle of human sexuality uh, inside that smaller circle without within human sexuality uh, the thirds are proportioned differently the psychology uh, psychological development part has been swollen it, it's much more uh, a protagonist in, in, in what's going on as far as your homosexual ideas desires inclinations um, now, um, I don't know if this kind of answers your question, but it's more like a, a field of, of structure to sort of uh, understand your own questions and your own ideas. A lot of people talk about being born that way, and this is another big question, you know, and, you know, especially now, the whole civil rights um, you know, against uh, re uh, ther ther uh, reverse therapy and so forth, is all based basically on the on the notion that it's just nature does that and we can't do anything about it. It's 
best and you're optimally more fulfilled. Uh, in other words, uh, if you satisfy your sexuality with the same gender. Um, and so modern thought had to, had to uh, establish that you're born that way. And that question has ceased to be asked. Uh, it's not allowed to be asked anymore because if you ask that question, then you go back again to start the whole polemics of what is it then? What is it right? Is it wrong? Is it, is it detrimental? Is it fulfilling? Is it uh, finding yourself? Or is there something that may atrophy society in the long run? All those questions, which are rich and complicated and controversial and ca cause so much, so much feelings, are silenced by simply saying, implying, because we don't actually say it so often, that you're born that way. That had sort of like Lady Gaga says, right? And that just makes everybody just take their own route, you know, the people that are not interested in homosexuality says, hey, you know, it's about civil liberty and I have gay friends and what have you. And the people who f need to fulfill their sexuality with homosexuality uh, feel like they have a space. And it's interesting, though, because they never really find peace. If you look at the movement from since the 80s, it's always been a series of now we want to get married, now we want to adopt, and, and now we want to be president, and now we want it to be law, and it never ends. And, and there's, there's a reason for that. Homosexuality is unstable ultimately, innately, by nature, obviously, because it's putting two genders, forcing them to do something that nature designed to do one single way, which is to uh, procreate, you know, to engage sexually to procreate and have the, the offspring. And so we're ideologically saying, no, but we have to be able to establish this for life. One person can go with another same gender for their whole life. And we have to install this permanently. And so that creates a, a tension with what is unchangeable, which is the, the human form. And so they're never quite, and not only because of this reason, but because really the 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 desire in, in developing and seeking and being sensitive to homosexuality because homosexuality is, is a constant possibility it's not absent in anybody it's just putting one gender with the with the same one and what will happen is homosexuality you can feel pleasure you anybody can experience pleasure homosexually now that we don't is because of that cultural social aspect that I was saying and 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 also the psychological because if you really grew up as you know in a wholesome way and this is what they're having so much trouble under so much conflict because it starts talking about is it then a pathology is it then an illness it's not it's not quite you know we're very imperfect as a society and we all come out differently and some people really come out well rounded and their satisfaction through what would be a homosexual experience is minimal, even though it's always able to be found, is minimal because all of their other uh, uh, duckling, ducks are put in the right place in their male for in the development of their male formation. Now the theory is that this kind of materialistic, functional, system-oriented, do over-dominant modern society produces a lot of homosexual desire, um, or well, my theory, I don't know, I've never read a book that taught that, but I suppose it must be. Produce, I think there, I may have heard something, some, produces a lot of, of homosexual desire, generally spread out in the general sense, and therefore the cases of people that ultimately seek it strongly or feel fulfilled by it are many. And, and it's interesting also, if you look at history, that, um, that, um, empires that have risen, there's like a curve of things that happen, you know, and it's been, it's been studied. I mean, I've seen a bunch of documentaries and um, dissertation seminars on this sort of thing, uh, that they go through phases. Uh, for example, they start adorning themselves, they become vain, they start, the women and the fashion start getting more complicated. And homosexuality seems to arrive to uh, intensify. What happens is that society and culture, you know, you can't, it's not something you can get rid of. And that's where the problem comes because 
religious or at least the beliefs, the religious interpretations would have you, uh, would want you to believe it is wrong, must be suppressed, it is a sin, and so forth. In reality, it occurs in nature, it occurs in human beings, but it occurs not because it's an option that nature gives us, oh, well, you know, you can go this way or that way, no. It's something that occurs because of reasons, because of forces that affect maybe even the fetus or, you know, um, and, um, and psychologically, this, this is actually being, has been developed a lot. There's tons of books that speak of what are the various combinations or problems or situations that can develop a desire for the same sex as, her, but you know, this movement that we're going through now wants to suppress all that because like I said, it brings back the question and it no longer allows us to establish that you're born that way in order to fulfill this movement. And so all that, all those volumes of, of psychological study of homosexuality are totally suppressed. They're unpopular. You're, a, you're a, a bad, mean, racist person if you pick up one of those books. You can't go study them. Um, but going back to the, to the, the um, whether you're born, it's not that you're born that way. Or it's not that, okay. What the way it, the way it is is that we're all we're all born with a, a packet of uh, a wiring of how dynamics and chemical and biology mechanisms and, and reactions will work. Um, but we're not identical. And we're all equal, but we're not we're all the same, but we're not identical. That doesn't mean that nature decides to go the other way with some people. No, it's all pretty much designed as we see it, to work as we see it, uh, meaning man, woman. <laughs> uh, but some people are uh, come with a, a proportions, everything about understanding life and the world and, and everything has to do, is about proportions understanding what is predominant, not what is one way or the other, but what is how the proportions are. This is totally key to understanding how life is, and why it comes out the way it is and how it works. And so the proportions in the person is are set up a certain way that when they have that uh, overbearing or aggressive and, and um, canceling mother, you know, the mother that makes you feel, I'm more important than you, and shut up, you know, what are you, gay or something? There are mothers that totally emasculate, it, emasculate their children, their boys, their little boys. <laughs> that's, that's one of the strongest uh, reasons, because you, the boy, little boy grows up thinking, oh my God, women are a, a negative, they want to they wanna annul me, they don't, I'm nothing to them, so you you develop no complementing interest towards the women, towards women. Uh, you know how typically mothers are with babies that they, they're super patient and the baby will grab their hair and, 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 and the mother will just go, you know, and let the baby pull its hair. And this, this is more typical where if you pass the baby to the father and the dad, you know, immediately the father feels he needs to teach discipline and, and behavior. Um, but this unconditionality of the mother that is more typical of a maternal love is what later becomes, I have a place, I, have, I will be received in the woman. I will, she uh, needs my, my backbone or, or I compliment her with my backbone and, and there's a place for me in her and she will receive me. You know, if that doesn't get developed, then we just don't see why we should go towards women. And then, of course, there's, like I was saying in, in what I wrote you, the, um, the relationship with the father. Um, if the father also says, you know, you're not worthy of me trusting you, admiring you, because in their own way, fathers admire you and put you forward, they put you on top of the front of the ship, right? And they see how you stand up there, even though they're driving the ship, right? Um, if the father doesn't do that, then also you feel, well, I'm not really required by other men to be part of, to lead society. And so all these things play into discovering, because that's what happens. 
you know, like for example, uh, let me not change subjects. And so when the baby is born, their particular wiring, their setup will be prone to be more affected or less effective by these different this myriad of different influences that they will have in their development. So two twins, okay, two brothers, not twins, will have the same parents, maybe close enough will be treated pretty much the same way by the father and their paternity and the mother and their maternity. But you see that one became, um, one be, you know, started pursuing homosexuality and the other one didn't. You see, you see almost like the brother that didn't, that he could be, he's soft maybe, but he doesn't really go all the way. He's not, you know, he kind of abandons the, the thought. While the other one really good, keeps going back to homosexuality. Uh, well, this has to do with how they were predisposed to being affected, not that they were decided before birth to go one way or the other. Um, so as you can see, this is a science that is really poorly understood. Uh, and we had, we just, the, the West just wanted to solve the violence and the, the, uh, the segregation. <laughs> it made it worse because now they established, uh, established a, a new category. But before we all socially intuitively understood that homosexuality could happen to anyone, nobody wanted to say that and we really shun and and punished and wanted to get rid of homosexuality, but there was a side of us that kind of knew this can happen to human sexuality. We never were intelligent and never developed towards it and, and uh, compassion and loving to where the sciences would go into exactly where it is. Uh, instead, when the sciences started going into where homosexuality is, um, Stonewall, Christopher Street in the 70s happened, and there was always a controversy. People who wanted to just shut it up and say people are born that way and just get them out of society. But in the 50s, and, and you know, and, and then we got to the 70s, really start, starting to talk about the stronger part in the purport, the three proportions of hom uh, of sexuality, which in homosexuality is, is the psychological development. And wouldn't you know that when in the United States, the police and the politicians, you know, they wanted to, they wanted to be the winners and they just brash fully went over the sophistication of psychological understanding of homosexuality and decided that they uh, need to be respected. They need to be able to have their little pubs and their gathering and there's, we, should, we should protect uh, their civil expression, their social expression and all this movement started happening. And what they didn't realize is that when they did that, they were saying they should be respected. Who is they? Who is they? They obligatorily must be the ones born that way in order to be able to build the whole civil um, categorizing of a class that needed to be protected and rights given to. And so it was established in silence that they always come up. And then, of course, if ever, anybody ever asked it, so, yeah, there have always been gays. Well, you know. There have always been gays doesn't mean that it's one of nature's options and one of the things that um, that's evolution and nature is not did not decide well it could be this way or that way no we we that's what we did with the situation of of nature compensating for the the, the intense social forces that we afflict on ourselves through our intelligence of civilization the intelligence and the complicated the complicated in, intelligence precocious um, mechanisms of human civilization that we create in civil society and industry and commerce and administration and government and, and ways of working and ways in, in which create values and, and philosophies that are complicated and have to explain, you know, where, why we are the way we are and everything that is the result of our, of our complex high intelligence affects 
how our children grow up, by how we treat them in all of these aspects growing up, and how we send them to school, and we take them out of the house, and we put them, you know, everything that we do to ourselves, apparently, in the, in the collective sense of it, affects how much homosexuality is desired, which makes all the natural sense in the world. If, you, if we look at any animal, we'll say that totally comfortably. You know, the environment they are in, uh, how, uh, you know, the, what they're eating, you know, will result in eggs that are more fragile and a certain number of homosexuality. And so we understand homosexuality is a, is a manifestation of the sexuality of animals. Uh, that is t totally affected by how they are uh, being raised and how where where their civilization lives and, and how they they interact with the world. But when it comes to us, we can't do that. We don't know how to say we are doing this to ourselves by how by the world we created. We uh, and and, the, and that we have uh, inserted ourselves into. We uh, find it too difficult too intimately challenging, too uh, burdenful, because we have to maybe acknowledge that, oh, well, I wasn't such a great dad, or, or I'm not really a good friend, or a good boss, or whatever it is. It's just heavy on us, and so when the United States, when this happened in the United States, um, and the police and the, the politicians, the, the politicians use the police to uh, enforce and, and build a whole legal sector, it also took care of the burden of the heaviness of it. And, but we made ourselves dumber about our own sexuality. That's, that's the tragedy. That's the, the, the you know, mm, the tra you know, we had, we were almost there to start talking about, because eventually, it's not such a bad thing because if we understand how the way we treat our, each other or ourselves as a society, as a civilization, results in the number, uh, the, the amount of homosexual interest or desire, satisfaction rather, because that's what it really comes to is that when you try homosexuality, you discover, oh, wow, I really needed that. That it's, I don't know why, but it, it soothes or it really touches something and that changes the more we were affected psychologically to be uh, uh, prone develop, developing as children prone to be satisfied uh, the more okay I, that, I just made a loop the more satisfaction we want is because we we had more influences that have that made that possible in the future the less that it satisfies us, the more um, it means that we had all the things that the human being needs to wholesomely and fully develop their gender sexuality. Um, but it is, satis it is you can find satisfaction even if you're the most robustly developed male because of the strength of our biological, chemical, sensorial, a uh, third of it that I was telling you about. That third of it is very strong in sexuality and even stronger. Uh, and then, of course, if you're just, let's just to make things simple, say if you're straight, quote unquote, and you have homosexuality, there's a whole other aspect of pleasure that has to do with uh, forces related to the same gender sexual energy, which are different to when you go with a woman, which appear attractive, they may bore you after a while, but initially they're also, they pull you in a lot more. So the whole subject is very fascinating, but we have made ourselves scared of going into our own sexuality, which is tragic because what I was about to say before is that if we were to come to terms with how sexual, homosexuality develops in, in civilization, it means that we would have a roadmap to see, well, we are doing this to our children when we send them off to school for too many hours with people they don't know. We, we do this to children when um, parents get divorced and only think about themselves instead of uh, having a society and a culture that establishes you stay friends and make sure.
so that the, both children see you as friends, the children see you as friends, and, and that they're both taking care of them until, until they're old enough. The law doesn't do that now. The law takes the parents and says, okay, who's right here? Who's the one that has, uh, who's the better parent and who should dish out the money and who should have the physical presence of the children with her, usually, all the time. Uh, that's the, the law doesn't think in, uh, in the evolutionary natural sense that what most matters to the children is that they are loved and they're present and they're involved with both parents. They don't see divorce. Children don't see separation. You'll never, <laughs> it's, just, it's, an it's a construct of human civilization as well as marriage. Let's um, not get into that now. But there is natural bonding in marriage, but it, I think it has to do more with the, the, the period of time that the, the, the cause triggered by pregnancy or wanting to be pregnant and the period of time that the children need both parents around them, which they do. Part of that is their psychological development. But um, I think that perhaps we are w wired sort of to, you know how they say the seven-year itch and the three-year itch? I think that you start thinking about being unfaithful or what have you. Uh, I think that probably has to do with the age that the children no longer need both parents. Uh, and God knows, you know, there may be a whole science there, depending if a male is born, maybe the, the bonding between the mother and the father tends to erode faster, or if there are no males, the father will feel that they're, they, he needs to hang around the family. All this, all, this, all this chemistry, neurology, must be wired because we've been repeating the same thing for millions and millions and millions of years. But we just have, we just don't, so we talk about being green and holistic and self-sustaining and ecological and everything, but we fail to see that we're already very complexly well-designed and there's so much to learn and explore and start applying to the comfort, to our own comfort, uh, by seeing how we really are uh, anyways. And so uh, what I was saying is that the roadmap, this roadmap that we could draw from from seeing how homosexuality occurs in civilization uh, could lead us to a better society because, well, well, if we want there to, not that it's an evil or bad thing, but, you know, certainly we don't want guys to be their whole life pursuing a butt to have sex with. These are things that are hard to uh, establish today. It's hard to talk about this. So you can imagine I mean, I really appreciate that you, you are the only one, I swear to God, you are the only one, uh, I think since, since all this time, that instead of attacking me and saying you sound like this or you sound like that or you hate gays or blah, 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 actually has a question. Actually says, well, what about this then? Nobody has ever said to me or written or asked nothing, ever said, what about this then? <laughs> so I really appreciate that uh, Joy Dip that you did that you asked that. So, but uh, concluding with what I was trying to conclude um, is this is really the value, the two principal values that I find in this, which what could be a movement or a, a new intellectual endeavor, uh, is what it could provide as far as a roadmap to make a better civilization so that uh, by simply using um, homosexuality as a barometer that we honor, we respect because that's what nature does to, to compensate for what we mess up with. So we should kind of be grateful, but we don't really want it, okay? This is an attitude that we have never known. And it's at the core of, of this whole theorem we could use it to say, okay, well, how do we get it to be less sought as a, as a, well, for example, by having this kind of society or this raising or how we relate to even philosophical values of friendship and bonding in society could, could start changing as they are uh, addressed, as they refer to the way our children bring our, you know, for example, I was raised, uh, I was put in Argentina, 
away from my parents. Uh, they stayed in America, you know, and when I was in Argentina, everybody was just, they didn't want to touch us. During, during the summer when my mother would come visit, yeah, they all came over for parties and dinner and they all went out to the beach and to the casino. And so all of a sudden life was, was on, you know, for, for me. I, and there were people, and there were friends and there were uncles and, you know, friend uncles. And, and, uh, and then when the w winter rolled around, boop, everybody disappeared. So imagine that we were a society that uh, understood how children are affected and we want all our children to grow up if we raised all our, in a world that raised our more uh, our children in a together sense, uh, not to, you know, we don't have to be fearful of homosexuality, of homosexuality, but we already know that for the child to optimally develop in all their senses, uh, and this child doesn't have the mom and the dad during winter, then friends would automatically in that culture, in that society, make an extra effort to be around, take turns. Hey, have you gone to see the kids, Laura's kids this winter? Have you, have you, yes, yes, I'm taking care. I'll take care of the school, you know? And so the child, um, I'll take care of taking him to football practice as another friend, you know? And so the child all of a sudden doesn't have the father, but he has males that he's, that are, that are giving him, that are having a column in front of him, like the dad, he has, he has several columns because it's not about how our parents raise us and what they do so much as it is how our predisposition, our wiring is attended to. We are wired in a way that we will see the world of men and women and start looking for men and women by whom to grow up by, by whom to grow up by, through who, uh, to look at growing up. And form ourselves. If we're a male, if we're a little baby boy, we're going to start looking at guys a lot. Because I know that's me. And so it is us who's seeking. So that's why, um, for example, a guy is totally uh, attracted to women and, and loves sexuality with sex with women. And they had a father that left the mother when he was a little boy and so there was a big blow but that mother was wise enough to to create sort of a, a guide a leader and, and, and allowed for bonding with her boyfriend and that boy and that boyfriend who never even really but you know he came to the house and he brought things and he took care of the mother and the little boy saw how how he was a man he was a father in a, in a psychological sense even though they never even married this new boyfriend. But this man also, uh, you know, facilitated that the little boy had guy friends and, and all his little, little buddies, all his little boyfriends, saw the boyfriend as their friend's father. And so all of these dynamics, it got spread around and, the, and then the, the, the little boy was easily able to relate to other boys in school and he made his little posse of, of, of guy friends. And so all of these requirements were satisfied for the uh, little boy growing up. So it's really wonderful. We're wired already. We're, we're, in other words, what I'm trying to say is that we are resilient. We're flexible. It, it doesn't have to be a marriage, you know, because obviously so many people do things the right way and homosexuality develops anyways. We think we do it the right way. We just don't understand our own mind. We don't understand our, our species well enough. We have ideas that want to take over and change everything and reinvent everything, but we really don't go by our design, how what we need socially. So the concept, the that was one of the main concepts that it, it could be a roadmap for us to really know ourselves better and make a better world, better society. And also, more importantly, what this contemporary movement is uh, washed, has obliterated, and, and does not allow anymore uh, is that a guy may have lived. Uh, you know, homosexual, maybe grew up in the 80s and had a whole bunch of gay sex and he thought he really 
it was the way the world was heading towards in the future, which is kind of like the the subconscious thinking of a lot of young people. This is so about freedom and being, you know, this is the way and da da da. What if, you know, this person, for whatever reason, maybe they met a girl and they, they, they saw a side of them that they liked better. They liked better that they didn't seem to be chasing after a um, man anyway, that he was complimenting and he was he felt useful or he felt like like something that could stand up on his own all of a sudden, uh, complimented by the love of the woman and he saw a whole different uh, psychological scheme and then, or maybe he went to other cultures and he traveled and he, he understood that his homosexuality was really fluid. It has to do with something that was shaped and maybe, and, and when, when all of a sudden he liked himself better having sex with that girl, he made up his mind. He saw that, no, there is a way. I, I like it. I like this better. Obviously, it's true. You can leave it behind. You can uh, continue maturing as a man, and the sexuality that was homosexual becomes smaller and smaller and further away in time as your maleness develops, and uh, it is possible. So he wants to say this to his friends. He wants to talk about it, and what does he find? himself people that say oh you want to heal you want to change you want to uh, think homosexuality is sick and all of, all of these things get thrown at him and they don't allow him to because it's it's not like he became instantly a man's man you know he still maybe needs to work through instances that, you know when he broke up with that girlfriend maybe he needs to find guys that will sort of keep him afloat as male friends would and if he if they suspect that he was gay before he met that girl maybe they all kind of go like that and stay away from him and all of a sudden he feels a drop in, in, in love or inclusion in society and before you know it he's again looking to satisfy the need for love and what came easy and what was so satisfying when he was younger which isn't homo easy. All you have to do is stray into a club and and you know go like that, and somebody takes you home. So um, when when uh, a person tries to uh, work through their their tra their re rematuring or their process of, of, of uh, advancing towards. Uh, their natural human heterosexual sexuality, we don't, they don't find this well centralized balanced discourse. They find, or or knowledge, or cultural uh, eloquence, or cultural uh, education and knowledge. What they find is a tendency that pushes to separate gay or not gay and repress anybody that would try to go back. <laughs> And a lot of people don't see that, but you, you do see it when you try. <laughs> when you try to talk about it, try to talk about, for example, I used to do this, I'm making this too long, but anyways, I'll conclude. Uh, I used to do little surveys in West Hollywood, right? And I would, I lived in West Hollywood. My mother lived in West Hollywood. We, we lived there a long time, and, uh, the west side of LA. And so I was staying with my mother, and I would just walk out to a Starbucks, and it was all gay guys. So, and they knew me because, you know, when I was younger, I was always in the clubs and, and, and going out. Um, and so, but this time I was older and I was going through this whole, you know, the, uh, theorem development and all my ideas were getting form, formed, taking shape. And so I would go out to Starbucks, comfortable. <laughs> That's why I laugh when, when my friends say, you're a homophobe. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Anyways, um, I would take um, uh, a questionnaire and and go, um, you know, uh, or something. You know, say, hey, you know, I met a girl, or or maybe say make a statement, and um, and say, hey, you know, I met this girl. I feel so. God, I feel I wasted all those years, you know, going to bed with men when this is just so so comfortable, so makes me feel like I really am with everybody, you know, I, I can't describe the feeling. 
and all of those guys and the let's say they're all straight guys at a and girls at a Starbucks in West Hollywood they all kind of go back yeah really oh good for you you know whatever who is this guy he says he's no longer gay who cares the society is not there that is we have we don't have a cultural well-centered balanced um unifying one human sexuality educated and knowledgeable society we have a society that allows this and must have things either this way or that way and does not allow that and really encourages that uh which is an it's a it's an articulation a simplified articulation which uh censors uh people who maybe want to go the other way want to leave homosexuality or censors even is even uncomfortable with uh, well, I'm going to make it more complicated, but I hope um, I hope this is useful and namaste.